Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video, I'm actually going to address a couple of questions that have been coming up to me uh, from a very long time. I've heard this, these questions like a thousand times, especially from people who are just getting started in the DevOps and site reliability field or people who are basically switching from some other field into maybe from testing, they are moving into uh, DevOps and site reliability. And the questions are, uh, is coding required to be a DevOps engineer uh, or a site reliability engineer? And if yes, then how much coding is required, right? So to keep the long discussion short, yes, coding is required uh, to be a decent DevOps or site reliability engineer. And then addressing the second point that how much coding? So you don't actually need to be a coding wizard uh, or a coding champion, or you, you it's not required that you have solved like a thousand questions on lead code and hacker rank. No, that, that level of coding is not required. That uh, I always believe that uh, that coding, those coding problems are very different from what you encounter when you work as a site reliability and a DevOps engineer. Uh, there are companies who have different sense uh, for this, these, these positions, uh, DevOps or cloud engineer. So they actually look for people who have that kind of coding experience, coding knowledge, where they are able to solve very high level data structures and algorithm problem, right? Uh, for that, uh, for example, Google is one company. If you uh, interview for Google's site reliability position, uh, you would be given very uh, advanced level data structures and uh, algorithm problem to solve, right? Uh, but that, I mean, these companies are very, uh, very few in number or very exceptional. Probably, I mean, Google is one and maybe a couple of more companies are there. But 99% of companies who, who hire for DevOps and site reliability, they don't look for that advanced level of coding experience. You should have coding experience. It's an additional uh, skill, you can say. Because uh, when you work as a site reliability engineer, it's not just coding that you do. You work with a lot of different tools. You work with a lot of different uh, ecosystems. And each tool has its own DSL, right? So uh, let's take for an example, you join a company where, which, where the workload is very heavy Terraform dependent and you have to write a lot of Terraform uh, code, right? You have to write a Terraform module. So there uh, your your basic coding experience suppose if you're working on a high level language like python or go that that becomes uh, nullified right because you now have to do terraform coding which is uh, completely terraform dsl and it's very different from coding in python or uh, go right so i'll tell you three things in this uh, video which you should know when if you're using a coding language whether it can be golang assuming most of the DevOps engineer, they prefer using either Golang or Python. So I'm assuming that you are using either of these two languages, right? So just three things if you know uh, in, in that particular language, I think you should be good to go. Uh, you would have enough experience of, I mean, that would probably be the most uh, coding experience you would ever need, right? So number one is reading and writing files. So you should know in whatever language you are using, you should know how to read a file, how to write a file, because uh, you would probably be writing a lot of automation, a lot of scripts where you are actually parsing some file, right? You're parsing maybe a log file and you are fetching some information from the log file, right? So you need to know how to read and write files uh, in that particular language. Number two is working with lists and dictionaries. So I work with Python a lot, so I know that in Python two data structures are list and uh, dictionary, which are very important. So dictionary is basically a key value pair kind of a data structure and list is basically a collection of items, right? So you should know how you iterate over a dictionary, how to iterate over a list, uh, how to append to a list, append to a dictionary and these kind of operations you should know. And even, even if you're using Golang, your Ruby, uh, these data structures exist in them also. So probably, this would be very helpful if you know how to work with list and dictionaries. And the number three is parsing JSON and YAML outputs. So uh, if you're writing an API, if you are writing some form of code, which is returning some uh, output, some solution, uh, chances are that it is either a JSON output or a YAML output. So you would actually know, you would actually want to know how to parse a JSON output, how to parse a JSON response because it can be that you are getting some response from an API, which is in JSON or a YAML format, and you actually have to pass that and extract some values from those, right? So this is very similar to reading and writing files. So if you know how to read a file, probably that file can be uh, a JSON file, right? 
so you should know how to pass json and yaml in a particular language so if you know these three things i think though that would be it for uh, your coding round if you are if you are i mean uh, going through a coding round for any company because that's all they ask for right so i mean what i have experienced in my i mean in my personal experience what all co coding questions i have got uh, i can remember remember a few so once i got parsing a log file and extracting some values from that right so that that is when you need to know how to basically read a file and then extract values from that one time i was given a dictionary and i actually had to extract some uh, information from that dictionary and put it in another dictionary right and one time i was given uh, a yaml file and i actually had to create another yaml file with some values so it's mostly like you have to extract values and maybe format the output in a particular way but the basic concept just a second the basic concept behind all those is that you need to know how to read write file how to uh, work with listed dictionaries and how to parse json and yaml output that's pretty much it uh, if any company that goes beyond these concepts probably is looking for someone who has a lot more core development uh, experience rather than just being a site lab because when you are a site or liability or a devops engineer it's not coding that you do all the time right you have to do a lot of operations work you have to work with a lot of different tools maybe you are working with a lot of configuration management tool right ansible chef they all they have their own dsl uh, ansible ha ansible uses yaml right so uh, you if you work with terraform terraform ha has its own dsl right so like i'm saying there are bunch of tools that you actually have to i mean if you are a coder say if you are a python coder you only have to work with python right but if you are a devops or a site reliability engineer you would be doing, doing much more than just coding uh, or writing code right you would be monitoring you would be on call you would be writing some automation you would probably writing some script uh, you would be writing terraform modules you would be writing auto ansible automation you will be creating pipelines data pipelines a lot of stuff so it's not just coding which is required so that's all i had uh, and i mean this is all what i have experienced in all my years of uh, work the kind of coding experience you require and if uh, a company decides to go beyond that then probably they are looking for someone who who has a lot more uh, vast experience or who is more of a coder than an ops guy right so yeah i think that that sums up my video probably uh, please feel free to put in comment what are your thoughts on these right Uh, this is what i know from my experience i would love to hear what you guys think and yeah that's all for this video guys uh, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching